What makes Ultra Kill so much fun? What does Ultra Kill do that other fast-paced games don't do? The game understands what makes a speed demon FPS game fun. And it kind of twists the pacing until it resembles like a turtle on a treadmill. Here's some clips to show you what I mean. Hideous mask. Oh, oh, oh he's got a he's got a grabber. Demons have higher intelligence and husk. Malicious faces are the most common type of demon, but extremely dangerous. Oh, you already know this one's gonna pack a punch, man. That's not that's not even how the Bible works, buddy. Okay. How the Bible works, buddy. Why won't it open? No, oh, yeah, that, that checks out, I guess. There's literally not a middle ground. You're either flying around shooting deranged meatballs or reading lore from a book. Now, normally, switching pacing like this kills the player's desire to play the game. But I mean, take Ghost Runner 1, for example. The gameplay is about jumping around in fast-paced battles. It's incredibly satisfying because the game never slows you down unless you make it an error, like uh, Ultra Kill. Until you run into an insanely repetitive puzzle that causes you to walk around the room at walking speeds while staring at the wall for 10 minutes. If I'm not enough to convince you that puzzles in a fast-paced FPS game are bad, uh, take it from these guys. What the hell is with this puzzle? Nothing else in the game is even similar to this. These puzzles in any game make me want to uninstall them instantly no matter how good they are. It's tradition to hate on this level. It's the mag of Ghost Runner. Family guy. Delete it. Grab that guy's head and put it on the pillar. It's simple. It doesn't break any pacing. It just adds layers to it. Figure out whatever it is. No. Figure out whatever this is. No, no, is no, no. How you change and break your pacing really matters. And this segment that I'm showing you in Ghost Runner with this puzzle, it doesn't break the pacing for a good reason. Here, it kind of just breaks the pacing because it wants the player to do something. And I think this is kind of like a mistake on the devs part of thinking that player needed a break from the thing the game was created to provide. And its reasoning is like, hey, for story reasons, do this puzzle so that we can stop this thing from happening, which is usually valid in a different type of game. But to break pacing in a game like Ultra Kill or Ghost Runner, you have to have a good reason. In Ultra Kill, one of my favorite examples is Limbo. It seems eerily peaceful. There's fake speakers indicating that this is not real, and the walls are a fake sky. The player walks around with a gun, wondering why. Why is everything so quiet? Now, they're not changing the pacing because you know why. The reason they choose to change the pacing is not because it contributes to anything the player already knows, but it's to set an atmosphere of confusion or fear. It's to, it's to communicate a story. So whenever the pace is broken, I don't feel annoyed because I'm having to stop and do a puzzle. I, I feel, it feels eerie, and I feel like I'm having to figure something out and instead of being annoyed I'm looking around the room in awe trying to figure out why the pacing changed it feels like something is wrong and if the amount of blood here doesn't indicate that something is wrong then I don't know what will but honestly to be completely fair that was Ghost Runner 1 there's a Ghost Runner 2 and they fix a lot of these issues. <laughs> to build on- Why am I glowing? <laughs> to build on top of the phenomenal pacing that Ultra Kill has the music increases the doom-like testosterone survivor feel. <laughs> Gabriel the Angel will decide to show up out of nowhere and just be like, Machine, we're running to McDonald's, and then play a banger like this. Gabriel's voice actor is a blessing, by the way. He made part of this game for me. Combat is in no way to go unnoticed, though. It matches the pacing set by the music and the pacing itself perfectly. You'll constantly be swarmed with 9,000 enemies and have to figure out how to use your ever-growing arsenal of weapons that break the Geneva Convention to send them back to hell while bouncing off of walls at 300 miles per hour. You can combine all of these to create your own playstyle or just mash them endlessly because it makes you feel cool. The story, while currently not finished, is pretty nice too. It respects the fact that it's an FPS and only tells the story in small bites without boring or annoying the player. If the player gets hungry for lore or more of the story, they can binge read things on the computer or read a dead Christian's diary. But yeah, uh, play Ultra Kill, fun game. It'll give you crippling addiction to a Zally in uh, Breakcore. Bye.